in the Berg case, was Judge Surik paid off? Was this court case fixed? We know that Judge Surik did not say that Philip Berg's claims were in error. However, he did use some of the language directly out of Barack Obama's lawyer's motions in claiming that Berg's case was entirely frivolous. Also, it must be remembered that he never said that Barack Obama is a citizen of the United States. He never says that Barack Obama is a natural born citizen. I found some of what he said quite laughable. He said the plaintiff would have us derail the democratic process by invalidating a candidate for whom millions of people have voted and who underwent excessive vetting during what was one of the most hotly contested presidential primaries in living memory. I ask you, think about it. When was Barack Obama ever excessively vetted? In reading some follow-up articles to his decision, I found something rather interesting. Although this judge has a reputation of being very careful about his decisions, and we are told that he writes all his own briefs, all his own decisions, I came across this interesting tidbit that a former law clerk that was employed by Judge Surik, Christopher B. Seaman, is now an attorney, and he just, by coincidence, happens to be an attorney in Chicago, and he just happens to work at the law firm of Sidley Austin. Sidley Austin Law Firm in Chicago is the same law firm which one time employed Michelle Robinson, Bernadine Dorn. We know that Michelle Robinson is now Mrs. Barack Obama, and we also know that Bernadine Dorn is the wife of William Ayers, and it was at this same law firm that Barack Obama was employed when he met Michelle. Quite a coincidence, no? At any rate, what you've been looking at here is the top page of the facts that was sent by Judge Surik to Philip Berg, and you can see on the top of this that it states that this was sent to Philip Berg shortly after 9 p.m. on October 24th, 2008. And here you can see that it says 1809. That is the time that it was received in the judge's chambers, 1809, just a few minutes after 6 o'clock. And pages 1 through 36 have a time stamp on them between 1809 and 1816 of October 24th, 2008. The same date, of course, that this was faxed to Philip Berg. What what is interesting is if we look at the bottom of each page, we see an entirely different time stamp. The time stamp is 4.55 p.m. The top, as we saw, showed a few minutes after 6 p.m., 1809, military time. And on the bottom here, we can see that this is a date and a time stamp from another fax machine. And it's approximately one hour difference. Is it possible that this decision was faxed? to Judge Surik from another time zone? What would be approximately one hour away, have one hour difference in time? Chicago. Is it possible that this decision handed down by Judge Surik was actually written by Christopher Seaman or someone else in Chicago and that he simply signed it, reviewed it, and then three hours later faxed it to Philip Berg? It would certainly seem so. Thanks for listening.